Hi there, my name is Jack Wilkie James. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager at the Cairns Indigenous Art Fair. Um, and joining me in lockdown via Zoom is Francoise Lane. She's an artist, she's a designer, she's a businesswoman, and uh, she's been part of the Kai family for years uh, and part of the art scene here in tropical North Queensland for years as well. Um, and this year, she's the co curator of the Where's Your Permit exhibition alongside our artistic director, Janina Harding. Uh, good morning, Francoise, and thanks for joining us. It's lovely to be talking with you again, Jack. Yes, uh, uh, it's great to have you on the Zoom. Um, you look like you're dealing with lockdown quite well. I, I'm not minding our uh, three-day lockdown. Um, it's been such a busy time that I'm actually relishing not having to go out of home. But and working just relax. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you have been very, very busy. And I um, uh, recall coming down a few weeks ago to Tanks Art Centre uh, where you were busy installing the Where's Your Permit exhibition and it was this incredible hive of activity. Um, and it was it was an art form in and of itself watching you and uh, the Kaif Evolution trainees and the Tanks Art Centre, uh, you know, exhibitions team, uh, putting these great works on the wall and um, down at the tank. So tell us a little bit about Where's Your Permit, um, its concept, its relevance today, and perhaps a little bit about some of the key artworks and messages. Mm -hmm. So um, it was last year um, that Janina and I got together um, and talked about how we could connect um, what was happening with the restrictions on movement, um, especially um, in the eastern part of Australia, southeastern parts of Australia, um, and build that connection to it's not, it wasn't the first time that Australians had lived with restrictions on movement and how it could be a platform to better understand, um, you know, the impacts of restrictions on people's life, to have it as a starting point for conversation. So um, the, the premise of the exhibition is what happens when um, lockdown is not for the greater good? What happens when it's not about keeping people safe because of the virus? Mm. What happens when it's part of a, a, government, um, a government act, which is a paternalistic act and um, not honouring of, of human rights? Yeah. Um, yeah. During, that, during the time of the Protectionist Act, when restrictions were placed on the, on the movement of Indigenous people, um, where their rights were removed, they didn't have a choice on where they were able to reside. They were told where they could reside, reside and were moved about at the will of the chief protector. Um, mm. or protector. Um, you know, these were really, really difficult times. Um, and it, it it was, you know, that, that it was a, a racist policy that 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 drove these restrictions. Mm. Um, so the the per, where's your permit exhibition allowed for artists, um, and it was a voluntary exhibition um, to submit works that responded to the theme of living with permits. Mm. Mm. And of course, that's something that you know, everybody's experiencing today. And it's, uh, it's a very the poignancy of the exhibition and the stories of the artists and from their different communities and their different areas and their histories. Um, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's timely. It's what's happening to everybody now. Perhaps not everybody knew what had happened to Indigenous peoples here in, um, you know, Australia um, not so long ago. And a lot of the artists, you know, I, I'd, I'd imagine... Uh, would have a living memory of some of those policies still lingering. And then, of course, it sort of links it to what's happening today. And mm -hmm. uh, I believe that would actually be beneficial to the healing of our country and coming to a mutual understanding. And, of course, where's your permanent art is one of the conduits for that, uh, reaching that space. Mm, that's right. So um, I guess, like I said before, one of the main um, things to remember about where's your permit um, was that it was a voluntary exhibition. So whilst the invitations went far and wide, the um, 30 um, artists that contributed works into the exhibition did so because they wanted to share um, 
their story and their experiences mm -hmm. of either living through um, um, the, the protectionist act mm -hmm. um, or living through and creating during the times of restrictions of COVID. Um, so for some artists, they spoke about crying over their artwork as they made it. Mm -hmm. And it allowed them time to reflect and consider um, um, what had happened to their family, what had happened to other family members. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they found some level of healing through being able to produce artwork. And we know how important artwork is for mm -hmm. creative expression and how people how artists, creators can work through issues in their own life or issues with society or it can be a commentary on things that they see wrong with the world or can mm -hmm. be improved with the world or um, it can have political content or, mm. you know, they can challenge society. And it's such a, it's, and it's true, you know, art as therapy, art as a, a, a mode of communication for our peoples um, for tens of thousands of years, for eons, it's how we've survived. And, you know, the old adage of if you don't recall history or don't remember it, then you're doomed to repeat it. And um, while, and you made the point of difference uh, of the, the permit situation, you know, the re restriction on movements that's happening uh, today due to, you know, trying to keep people safe in a pandemic um, compared to how it was uh, racially motivated previously, it's a really key... Uh, message um, to to take forward as we're going through with this uh, pandemic response to ensure that while there are restrictions around movement for the necessity of a pandemic, how do we make sure that these policies to keep us safe don't become in some uh, unforeseen way uh, misshapen and misused uh, as another paternalistic measure on our peoples. It's not a conversation that we're having yet because we just don't know uh, what will happen. And of course, the altruism is still there. It's a, there's a great deal of, uh, of, of support that we're, our peoples and our regional communities um, are experiencing. But it is good to remember and to remind ourselves that just because this happened once doesn't mean perhaps that it can't happen again going forward completely just irrelevant of a pandemic. We're talking in general. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many other ways that policies work against us today as it is. Mm -hmm. so I thought, yes, yeah. I thought it was really interesting that um, the Hopewell artists, um, mm. in particular, their response to the theme of the exhibition went beyond just restrictions on movement. Mm. The, the other um, freedoms that were taken away from, from them mm -hmm. Um, and some of the artworks are about that. Um, so freedom's taken away from, you know, what um, vehicle or, or boat you could have in your community. Mm -hmm. When you could buy, repair, um, you know, brand new clothing, mm -hmm. who you could marry. Yeah, and I think it's, um, it's really interesting that you know, you, you had some of the stories um, from artists from certain communities of a period of time under the Protectionist Act, they recall positive memories mm. associated with um, having um, the missionary um, minister as being the protector and, and that mm. they were protected. And then mm. in another community, it can be a completely different story where, you know, you had a minister from another uh, you know, church who mm. whose ruling and authority went to their head, and mm -hmm. and you know they were they were making awful commands um, orders mm -hmm. on the people um, of their community. And it's but, it's such that alone is a great. Um, it's an insight that a lot of people, I think, and sometimes I, I think some. Um, contemporary Indigenous commentators also forget is that the experiences that different people in different areas had at these times were different. Um, you know, that we, we can, uh, this exhibition, I guess, breaks down the blanket approach to not only how people approach us, but how we approach our own history as well. Yes, I think so. And I, 
as curator, I thought it was important to maintain the truth telling mm -hmm. um, that the opportunities given for artists to tell their accounts mm -hmm. um, visually. Um, and there's two sides to the story and there's mm -hmm. Ray. So I wanted to be able to capture this in the works in the exhibition. Um, and that's and that's really important to mm. acknowledge there's more than one perspective, there's more than one voice, um, and and that those voices should be heard and not silenced. Mm. And you said that there's around 30 artists, there's so many uh, amazing pieces, there's sculptural pieces, there's painting pieces, there's um, artifacts as well. Um, what are some of the key, I mean, you love them all, but what are some of the key works with some of the key messages um, that you think that the audience might be able to, um, to, to uh, find some commonality with mm. or reverence yeah. for? Mm. Yes, I think, um, I, I, oh gosh, there's so many, I, there's so many relevant works. Um, I think there's the, the theme of, with some artworks that, no permit is required. Mm. Um, we have we have this knowledge. It's been entrusted to us by our community or by our um, ancestors, um, and we're owning it. So mm. these are the rights to traditional hunting. Um, yes, and mm. that's one one area, one one subject area. You have the um, perspectives on living under the protection of Aboriginals and um, restriction of the sale of Opium Act, mm -hmm. which was really well addressed by the Hope Vale artists. And these artists um, being elders in the community and traditional owners and women, mm. they're just gone for it. There's no restraint on them and the stories they tell. So they their works are very strong in that they're... Um, the narrative relies on the the strength of the visual um, mm. visual element of their artwork. Um, their artwork and those those more. pieces are stunning. Mm, the pen, are. the the brushwork on on those and the some of the the shades and opacities of the colours. It's um mm. yeah, I love them. You can see that the women are painting from a really happy unconstrained place mm. they express what's in their heart and even in expressing you know like they're a reflection of what's happened in the past there is still this you can see there's some resolve in what they've painted because they're delightful pieces to look at and contemplate mm. read their short stories the power um is in what is not spoken mm. um and if viewer allows themselves to contemplate around the gaps in what has not been said mm -hmm. um, you really gain insight into that that period of time mm. um, so there's there's works like that there's also um works of skills such as uh frida messina's um um uh, prawn traps mm -hmm. um they are beautiful lamandra fiber weavings um, that she's made of different sizes that represent the types of control on Aboriginal people during that protection era. Mm. And from one of those artists who was really soul searching and moving, creating her pieces because she was reflecting deeply over her family's. Um, trials and um during the protectionist era and she wanted to share her story so i encourage people coming along to the exhibition to read her story it's mm. powerful um and that's with her work you had um works from artists such as um simone arnold um, um and myself who mm -hmm. are drawing on materials that are found um and recycled her piece is sculptural um, mm -hmm. and um, she looks at the themes of being um, of her grandmother, her great grandmother who was sent out of Yarraba because she was too fair. And mm -hmm. so she wasn't allowed to be with her people. 
Um, mm. So her story is really super powerful. Um, and it's and there are pieces that look at the idea of the the you know the operative word of permit. It's not about just looking at what permissions we had, but what permissions were denied denied mm. of us. Yeah. And um, in many ways, people in whatever way that they are experiencing feel uh, some inability. And I'm hoping that this show um, speaks to people who maybe aren't even Indigenous as well, who can relate in some way to not being their full selves in the way that they wish to be, in, in the, how they live their lives and the choices they make. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's, and there's some, so many pieces um, there's two I want to ask you about, and Simone's a, a, a brilliant as well, and you know she's another um, dear friend of the Kaya family as well in many different ways that she's been involved. Um, Alec Tapati's works, mm. um, and uh, I believe there's a, a, a series of sculptures, small sculptures, he, the hairy men uh, uh, from are they Yarrabah? Yeah, that's Yarrabah. Is that Philomena? That is a that's all the artists at Yarrabah. Right. Um, They've come together to make these hairy men and little people sculptures. Um, they're, they're a bit spooky. Mm -hmm. um, and these are, uh, I mean, I, I guess it's open to pick like different people's perspectives on whether they're spiritual beings or physical beings. Mm -hmm. um, um, that's not part of my story. So, um, mm. certainly acknowledge that today, um, mm. people in the community see these beings, um, um, and they've made these create these ceramic sculptures out they're, of them. So. They're stunning, and they're so. so there's one piece, um, and the eyes of the piece it makes me really wonder if. And I would love to meet the artist and say, is that something that you've seen because it was the way it looks at you as a piece of art uh, mm. imagine how it, it lived in the artist's memory or in their their concept yes, yes. Mm. and i think i know the one that you speak of mm. there's one particular that stands out and mm. uh, and is and, if, and and that's a, that's a permit in a way because that in, in you know uh you know the, as we live with uh whether like you say whether they were spirits perceived to be spirits or perceived to be another uh you know race of um humanoid um either way there were restrictions um about where we could go what times we could play um where we weren't allowed to visit and it's it sort of brings it back into the those the beneficial sort of warning based uh restrictions i guess <laughs> And Alex works, um, the reason I wanted to bring them up for those watching at home is because if you're familiar with Alec Tapati, his works, uh, he's a senior lawman and his works, uh, he was a pioneer of the uh, monochromatic lino cut prints. So that's what he's famous for. And, you know, not just yay big, some are uh, mural sized. And this time for this exhibition, he's worked with fiberglass to create what would you call them? Like a, they're in, like okay. sculptural pieces. Yeah, they're yeah, sort of mixed mm. pieces. He's mm -hmm. um, referenced uh, cave paintings, rock paintings. Um, so he's used fiberglass um, and and added sand to that um, to create and stain to create these beautiful mm. textural surfaces. Um, that is his canvas. And then with the stains, he's used that um, to produce that aesthetic of um, imagery that Alec is really famous for, mm. the way he depicts um, um, Badu Islanders and the spiritual ancestors and those, um, um, the themes in stories that he, he tells. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're just, they're very exciting works and because it is a very new medium mm. like, um, and he has that permission to tell those stories from his community and he has that cultural authority um, and he is respected. Um, it's, it's just wonderful to have those pieces included. Mm. And it's very special to have them in the sixth 
exhibition. And they're debuting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, it'll be great to see what comes next for Alec and what the future pieces will look like. Mm -hmm. I say that during installation, um, we were very careful handling those pieces. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, yeah, we communicated with Alec to make sure we were installing them. Sure, um, and handling them um, the right way 